Children who are illegal aliens cannot be denied a free public education. A five to four vote, the court said a law which required them to pay tuition was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court's ruling in Plyler versus Doe, in which it rejected a Texas attempt to charge tuition to undocumented students in kindergarten through 12th grade public school, was a landmark decision for civil rights of Latinos and immigrants in the United States. The case basically established two critical propositions. First, it rejected the state of Texas convention that undocumented immigrants were not persons for purposes of the U.S. Constitution, and instead concluded and made clear that persons includes everyone, including undocumented immigrants, such that they could call upon the protections of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And second, the court established a right enduring today that every student has to access a public school education free of charge, regardless of immigration status. Plyler versus Doe means that every child gets to go to school and complete school without undue obstruction because of immigration issues. That means that even immigration enforcement that occurs in the transit corridors where kids walk to school, where kids take a bus to school, can violate Plyler. It also means that intimidation of parents, keeping them from being involved in the schooling of their children, keeping them from volunteering, may also be a Plyler violation. It also means that the things that might not involve actually being on a campus, but a field trip or an extracurricular activity have to be made available to undocumented students as well. Anything that prevents or deters a child from getting a full education, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be applied to a violation. These were innocent kids. They were not responsible for uh, being in this country. And there's a whole body of law that, that talks about, uh, and the court adopted, that talks about not punishing children for the sins of their parents. Every night, hundreds of Mexicans enter Texas illegally, often bringing with them children who often end up in the Texas public school. While the court split five to four on whether the Constitution prohibited what the state of Texas was trying to do, all nine justices joined an opinion, majority or dissenting, that recognized that it was senseless to choose to deny a basic education to any child, including an undocumented child. Texas was very much a segregated society. One of the things that I recall as a child is the refusal by a cafe to serve a congressman, Henry B. Gonzalez. And this was East Texas. I mean, this I mean, we talked about Texas being a bad place. East Texas is the sort of place that, I mean, I spent a lot of time in Tyler because of U.S. v. Texas and Plyler. But, um, you know, it was the first time in my life that I saw, there, you know, black people walking down the street and they wouldn't look me in the eye. You know, they would, you know that's, you know, that, that's the sort of place that Tyler was. So, Plyler versus Doe KDOT came out of an attempt by the state of Texas to allow school districts to charge tuition based on the immigration status of enrolled students. Of course, the Supreme Court knew, as did everyone, the charging tuition effectively meant that those students would be barred from attending public school. Faced with a bill, they would simply not be able to attend public school. And that's what the Supreme Court addressed, concluding that it made no sense to deprive any child of a basic education, as would be acquired in kindergarten through 12th grade public school. Whether undocumented immigrants were covered by the Equal Protection Clause there had never been a flat out holding on this. There'd been a holding on due process, but not on equal protection. This was a sure winner for us. We had limited amount of time to argue that we would let that one sit. We had plenty of other things to argue about rather than whether undocumented people were covered by the equal protection clause. And we had briefed this all too. We clearly briefed it. Soon after I stood up, Thurgood Marshall boomed out in an sort of inimitable style of, of, you know, uh, sort of blasting out. I have heard the 14th Amendment, amendment or, or whether or not this is a person yet, and this is about five minutes from the end of the argument. Pretty clearly, Thurgood Marshall didn't need to know, but somebody else did need to know. Common misunderstanding that what Texas did was directly exclude undocumented kids. They effectively excluded undocumented kids by basically saying we're not going to re reimburse school districts for their education. 
state of Texas tried to argue that there was an excessive number of undocumented school children. They provided data that they had no basis for providing. There were guess estimates, uh, and they were talking about in the hundreds of thousands, uh, 100,000, I can't remember the exact number. And this has a multiplier effect when you look at the cost of people uh, in terms of supporting them annually for schools. This was a case uh, that I thought had to be filed because it affected children, innocent children who didn't make a decision to be, quote, illegal aliens, close quote. They followed their parents, which is what any child would do. Uh, so it was the combination of the unfairness of it all, visiting this kind of uh, result. And that was from the sort of the empathy, moral point of view. But the other point of view that we thought about is, look, for all practical purposes, these children are ours. They belong to the United States. Talk about slippery slopes. I think if we had lost this case, there were plenty of states waiting in the wings uh, to enact similar legislation. So, you know, you're scared to death that if Texas is allowed to exclude undocumented kids, you know, who's next up? Uh, and and you're, you're empty-handed if the court has ruled. And we've even seen, even having one plyler, we've had to deal with that in California, of all places. We've had to deal with it in Alabama. You know, there have been various firefights that we've had to put out in terms of, of undocumented access to, to, uh, to schooling. As you know, cases are decided in a contextual environment. And the contextual environment was not sympathetic to, quote, illegal aliens, close quote. And the legal issues that you heard expounded by Tom Science and Peter Roos were there. You know, is the Equal Protection Clause, which has been elusive even for citizens, is it going to apply to this vulnerable group? And fortunately, the Supreme Court said it did. Crew members screaming. <laughs> And I can remember my wife uh, giving me hell for screaming so loud, wake all the neighbors. <laughs> I said, if you knew why I was screaming, you'd be screaming too. Uh, and I sort of walked on air down to the bus, which I took into Maldef. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was a day of, you know, dealing with the media and, and also pondering how close it was and what could have happened. I remember sitting around at lunch, you know, just being unbelieving that we were one vote away from from having lost this. I hope that as we go, move forward, that this case, this landmark case, will provide a basis for making the clear um, arguments for supporting immigrants and their families, stopping family separations, and unfortunately, as we see in the current time, uh, the current administration is going the opposite direction uh, and working with people who essentially don't want foreigners in this country and are using every excuse to minimize not just illegal migration, but also legal immigration. Plyler is a constitutional decision, and what that means that, is that no one, including the President of the United States, can decide to override Plyler. That constitutional right to attend public school free of charge, free of obstruction, from kindergarten through 12th grade, means that every child and his or her parents have the absolute right to enroll and attend public school. Any threat to that right, whether in the form of a clerk who says you have to produce a social security number to enroll, or an ICE agent who decides to patrol outside of a public school campus or enter a public school campus to begin questioning folks about immigration status, is a violation of Plyler. It should be reported to the school authorities and to civil rights organizations like MALDEF around the country because the Constitution protects against that kind of obstruction of public school access for any child and any child's parents. As a country, we say that we are proud of our immigrant heritage. We don't always practice that. I happen to believe firmly that it is our greatest strength. At, at times, it's attacked. I think it's a bit under attack now, and I think we all need to fight back. When it's about you, you know, maybe you won't speak up. 
But when it's about your child, you will stand up. That's what it was. Many of those undocumented students have become lawful permanent residents and even U.S. citizens, making contributions in academies, in corporations, and in our workforce throughout the country. So Plyler has really made it possible for our nation to thrive accessing the talents of all students, including undocumented immigrant students.